Daniel here for Tabletop for One. Please join me at the table as I play through Dragon Bond, Lords of Vala. And I thank you for joining me for the solo playthrough of Dragon Bond, Lords of Vala. I have gone ahead and set up the game for the solo play. I will be playing as Tiberia, the purple here. And then the three other factions are going to be AI controlled called the faceless. And so each faction has its own board. You'll see it has a faceless side here and the, the player side on the other side. But as the game plays, each faction is going to gain power. And of course the goal here is to gain 10 power to win the game. And the symbols here tell you exactly what the AI is going to do when they draw one of those symbols. And so, in the case of Magnifex here, if it draws a Wrath symbol, if Magnifex is not in the focus region, move Magnifex one region towards the focus region, then initiate combat if possible. If Magnifex did not move and did not initiate combat, collect a power instead. And then the Horde action involves collecting power. The Soar action involves moving and possibly collecting power. And then the Vala action in involves healing or spending power and possibly moving. That's for Magnifex. Now, Alaria is a general, and in generals involve having units on the board. And so Alaria will, will be putting units all over the place, assaulting different regions, taking over neutral and uncontrolled regions, and doing all sorts of stuff like that. So the assault option here involves placing units in a region and then moving units from adjacent regions into that region to attack. Harvest, of course, here is collecting power. Deploy is moving the general and uh, units to the closest region to the focus region. And then Vala is spending power to move the Alarian general directly into the focus region, place three units in that region and initiate combat. Now, one thing to note, the Alarian General doesn't care what kind of units it has. It does get a plus one to uh, plus one combat value to its general, but for having three different units, like in my case, I will have sometimes, it does not get a bonus uh, combat value. I'll explain that more later, but just to let you know. And also, the faceless generals don't gain any Denzine cards, meaning they don't upgrade their units. Again, I'll kind of explain that as we go. And then Fulgin, the blue dragon, is similar to Magnifex, a little bit different, has more health. And the Wrath is pra practically the same. The Horde is very similar as well. And then the Moving is similar. But in the Vala option, it'll heal wound and then if possible, spend two power. If that two power was spent, roll a combat die. For each standard or critical hit, deal a wound to each other dragon in all regions adjacent to a mountain. And the mountain regions, the mountains are right here. So the adjacent regions to the mountains are these four regions here. And then one other thing on the dragon boards, you'll see this on Magnifex's board here as well. Anytime they kill a unit, it's going to get added to this track here. And then once it fills it up, it'll gain a power automatically and then empty the track and keep filling it up. And so the setup for the game goes with Fulgen starting in Isval here. And then, of course, the Alarian General in Alaria. Then Magnifex in the lower Primalian range. And then I will start in the Trade Road. I'll get one of each unit. Uh, the Alarian General gets three units. Again, it doesn't matter what they get because they just use units in general. All other areas are going to have one neutral unit and one power token in each of those areas. So we're going to be trying to invade those areas, destroy the neutral units, harvest the power, and get 10 power to, to finish out the game. Now at the bottom here, you're gonna see a row of cards here, and these are Denzian cards. And what these are, are units that I can upgrade my units. So on my player board here, you're gonna see, I have three spots for the three different types of units, as indicated by these three symbols here. So these match up here. If I place a Denzian card, then that kind of unit gets the ability of the Denzian card. And so for any of the generals, any of the player generals, 
anytime you own one of the regions, you'll gain a region card. And this is the region card here. And so it's for the trade road. And what it does is it allows you to upgrade one of your units, deploy units or reinforce, and then build cities. And all those actions are outlined in the bottom left here for reference. And so if I wanted to use the trade road card, I could choose one of these units here and upgrade my units. Now I have to choose one that matches my region that I'm playing the card for. So down here, you'll see it says trade road. And so if I wanted this unit, I could play that card. And if I wanted a different unit of an adjacent region to the card that I'm playing, then I would have to spend a power to gain that card. But let's go ahead and check this one out here. So this one says gain plus one combat value in this unit's region if the opposing player or neutral force has a combat value of three or more. This one might prove very useful to me, especially when fighting the Alarian General, because the Alarian General is going to have a high combat value. Also, the Dragons, if they're unwounded, have a combat value of four. So I definitely want to consider getting that card. Now, the way the game goes is you're going to have this event deck here, and you're going to use the event deck and all the action cards of your character and of the faceless characters and you're gonna be building this action queue. And so I have my action cards here, like Harvest, which triggers the Harvest Glyph, or Arcane Deploy, which allows me to deploy and do a Vala action. Now a Vala action for me personally means I can either gain one of my magic cards or spend one by paying the power cost. And I'll show you that as we play. And then there's also Arcane Assault, so I can ass Assault and use a Vala action, or just Assault, or just Deploy. So I get to choose these cards here, and then the Faceless characters are each, every time I place a card into the action deck, each of the Faceless characters will place one in there as well. And those are randomized. So I'll go ahead and start it off here by taking one event and placing it face down here. Then I'm going to choose one of my cards here. And now I want to decide what I want to do here. I definitely want to upgrade my unit, this one. So I think that's going to be the first card I play. Now here's something to know. That when you use a region card, it, whoever has control over that region gets the benefit. Or if it's if you no longer if nobody has control over it, then it becomes a neutral controlled area. So you got to keep that in mind. You could lose control of a region before the card becomes activated. But I'm placing this as the first card, which means it'll be the first card activated. Then I take one of each of the faceless cards. And this is going to be in order. So if you see at the top there, I have Magnifex, Alaria, and Fulgen. So Magnifex, Alaria, Fulgen, like so. And I place them in the deck. Now, I can keep playing cards or I can pass. If I pass right now, I place an event card here, and that ends the planning phase. Now, the game can end if you run out of event cards, and there's only 12 of these cards here, so you're talking six rounds. So if you only do one action and do quick turns like that, quick rounds, the game's gonna end early. So you have to be careful with that. That may be a strategy that may, may be worth it, but you have to kind of plan that out. But I definitely want to do more action. So I'm going to take this and place this back here. And then for my second action, I'm going to choose De Arcane Deploy. Because I definitely want to get more units on the board. So I'll place that there. Then once again, one of each of the Faceless cards. I'm still not going to pass yet. Because I think I want to do an attack. So I'm going to use Arcane Assault. Then one of each again. And then last but not least, I plan on being able to harvest a power. So I'm going to use harvest. One of each again. And at this time I'm passing. Even though I have two more action cards, I do not want to use them at this time. So now we add one event to the end of the book here. And then we flip it over. Now you don't want to look at all the cards here because you, you can't spoil what's coming, especially from the faceless players. So the first thing you do is you resolve the event. And the event says, place one power token in each region adjacent to a mountain. 
All right, so that means South Tiberia, Nahu Woods, Phi Woods, and Upper Primalian Range all get an extra power. So now these areas are going to be... <laughs> everybody's going to be going for these areas. Because when the Faceless goes and when they move or attack, they're going to be going towards a what is called a Focus Region. And a Focus Region is the closest region with the most power. Now, for Fulgen, that could be these two here. Or for Magnifex, these two. And for Alaria, it's going to be Phi Woods. So I have to keep that in mind as I go along here. Now, you discard the event once it's resolved. And now we have the region card that I had placed. And so I get to upgrade first. And so I get the Scythe Reavers here. And it shows you on the side here which symbol it goes to. So it's the horseshoe symbol, so I will slot that in right there. So now my horseshoe characters have that ability. And then I get to reinforce, which means I get to place, if it's neutral or uncontrolled, I get to place two neutral units in this region. If it's controlled, the controlling general places a unit of their choice in the region and adjacent regions they control. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a horseshoe token here. And I don't control any other region, so that's all I can do off of that. And then I get to fortify now, which means if there is no city token there, I get to place the city token. Now the city tokens, they help with defense, and they also help with movement from C to C. With a city token here, I can move my units from this region to any region connected by the C. So you see the C on the side here. And it's connected all the way around. So if I wanted to, I could move over here. And I may want to do that, especially if I want to bond with Magnifex. And it's possible that I might do that. We'll see here in just a moment. And now the region card that I used will go back to me. And we'll see if I keep the region card at the end of the round. And now it's Magnifex's turn. And Magnifex is going to use the Soar ability. And so the soar ability for Magnifex is if Magnifex is in the focus region, collect a power token. Otherwise, move Magnifex two regions towards the focus region. The focus region, of course, is the closest one to Magnifex with the most power. These two here will count towards that. And so Magnifex is going to go ahead. And since I am the first player, the, the one with the initiative, which I will always be in a solo mode, I get to choose which of these two regions Magnifex is going to go. I'm going to choose this one here, I think. And so that's going to end Magnifex's turn. And we'll remove that card. And now, Alaria is going to Assault. So we choose a non-Alarian region with the most power tokens that is adjacent to an Alarian region. And there's only one Alarian region right now. This is the one that's adjacent with the most power tokens. Adjacent is with a border next to it here. So you see these dark lines are all borders, okay? And so for Alaria, they're gonna place a unit in that region, and then they're gonna move all units but one. So the general counts as a unit, and we're gonna move those two in, leaving one still in Alaria. All right, now the Alarian general is gonna initiate combat. And the way combat works is the faceless unit gets one combat value for each of its units, one for the general, plus one for the general. So a total of five. So it gets to roll five dice. And then you're going to look for any of the, the ones that are outlined. These are critical hits. But in this case, the Alarian general didn't roll any critical hits. It rolled three total damage. But this is after damage, so this happens later in the battle. If the Alarian General had rolled a critical hit, it would automatically apply and destroy that neutral unit. Now, because there is a neutral unit there still alive, it will get to roll, and again, it's however many units are there, so it has one, so it's going to roll one die. And it's got two hits, so it's going to go ahead and take out two of the Alarian General's units, but then the three damage would go ahead and kill off the neutral unit. And that's the end of the Alarian General's turn. Now again, if it was a dragon, the dragon would take the units that it's killed 
and put it into its track to try to accumulate power, but the general does not do that. And so we discard the card. And so now Fulgen is gonna go, and Fulgen has Arcane Wrath, which is both an Assault symbol and a Vala symbol. And so it's gonna go into the region with the most power. And so it's gonna choose between these two. And again, since I have the initiative token, I get to choose which one it's gonna to go to. So I have to decide whether I want Fulgen to go here or here. That's a tough choice. I think I'm gonna go ahead and move Fulgen into the upper Primalian range. And then it's gonna initiate combat. Now, once again, on the dragon boards here, you're gonna see its health here, as noted by the symbol. If it's full health, meaning it has no tokens here, it has four combat value. If it had tokens here, it would be down to three combat value or here down to one, but if it had full tokens, it wouldn't be able to do anything. It would do a rest and recover. We'll go over that later. And so it's gonna attack this neutral unit here. And with four power, it's gonna roll four dice. And it did get a critical hit. So that's two critical hit, automatically kills the neutral unit. And of course, this neutral unit goes to its board. And then there's no counterattack because there's no more units in that region. And now Fulgen would do his Vala action, which is heal a wound, and if possible, spend two power. It doesn't have any wounds, doesn't have any power, so that glyph is not going to apply. All right, so now it's my turn, and I have my arcane deploy. Now, things have changed a little bit, and I may want to do something different than I originally planned. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my deploy to move four units into the upper Primalian region. Now, here's what's going to happen here is when I move into a region with an unbonded dragon, when a, when a general moves into a region with an unbonded dragon, and it's a friendly move, then there becomes a dragon bond roll. And what you do is you take two dice, you're gonna roll one for the general, and that's a miss, and then one for the dragon, and that's a hit. Now, if both of these had shown a hit, then the two units would be bonded. But since neither of these show a hit, or since one of these shows a miss, then the bond doesn't happen. Now, if I had power, I could re-roll my die to try and go for a hit if I wanted to bond to Fulgen. But I don't have any power right now, and so I can't do that. Now, here's something to consider. The dragons never control regions, all right? So they can move to a region and, and not control it. They can be in a region with me and I have control over that region. Same with if Fulgen was with Alaria right now. So with Fulgen still there, I actually control this region just so you understand that part of the rules. And now with my Arcane Deploy, I still have the Vala action. And with Vala, I can either draw a Vala card or spend a Vala card by spending power. I don't have any power, I don't have any Vala cards, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw one. And this is fear. And so on the side here, it tells you how much power you need to spend. And then you choose a region adjacent to your general. Forces and dragons in that region must retreat to an adjacent non tiverian region or lose one power. And so this will go into my hand. I can use it during the Vala action if I want to. And now it's Magnifex's turn. Magnifex is going to soar and then use its Vala action. And so with Magnifex's soar, it says, if Magnifex is in the focus region, collect a power from Magnifex's region. Otherwise, move Magnifex two regions towards the focus region. Well, it is in the focus region, so it's going to collect a power. And this power will go to Magnifex's board. And so Magnifex takes the lead with one power. Now it's going to use its Vala action. And so its Vala action says, heal a wound, then if possible, spend a power. If that power was spent, move Magnifex to the adjacent region containing the most power. So the way spending power works is you flip it over, and now it's on its spent side. He still has the power, it still counts towards victory, but it can't be used anymore. 
Now Magnifex is going to move to an adjacent region containing the most power. And so Magnifex could move here or here. And since it's not dealing with a focus region, as in the rules, the initiative player would choose on the focus region, the rules actually state here for solo play that if a faceless player may, must make a choice, such as which region to retreat to, identify its options, then choose randomly using the dice or coin flip. And so we're going to call this odds and evens. And we'll roll a d6 here to decide where that goes. It's even, so it's going to move into South Tiberia. And so Magnifex's turn is done. And now it's the Illyrian General's turn, and it's going to use Arcane Deploy here. And so that means it's going to deploy first. And what happens when it deploys is it places an Illyrian unit in every uncontrolled region adjacent to an Illyrian region. So this is an Illyrian region here and here. It's going to place one unit here in Isval. Isval is currently uncontrolled. It borders the Phi Woods here, so it takes that spot. And then it says to move the Alarian General to the Alarian region closest to the focus region. It currently is in the focus region, so it's going to remain there. If no units were placed during this action, then actually three units would get placed in the general's region. But since it took over Isval at the top there, no additional units are placed. And then it's going to use its Vala action. If able to spend two power, it does not have two power right now, so it cannot use that. And so the Alarian general's turn is done. And then it's Fulgen's turn. So Fulgen is going to use the Horde action and the Vala action. And for the Horde action, Fulgen... If Fulgen isn't in the focus region, move it one region towards the focus region, but it is right now. And it says collect a power from Fulgen's region if this region is uncontrolled or controlled by a bonded general, collect an additional one. Well, it's controlled by me and we're not bonded, so it'll only collect one. So it gains one power to its board. And then its Vol action says heal a wound, then if possible, spend two power. Neither of those things are possible, so they don't happen. And Fulgen's turn is done. So now I have my Arcane Assault. And so Arcane Assault says I, I can use Assault and Vala after. And so my Assault says choose a region, move any number of Tiberian units from adjacent regions, as well as city regions connected by sea, to the chosen region. Initiate combat in the chosen region. So I, I could fight Fulgen. I think that's what I'm going to do here. So I have actually quite a nice advantage. So if you remember... I have my Scythe Reavers that give me plus one combat value in this unit's region if the opposing player, a neutral force, has a combat value of three or more. Well, Fulgen has a combat value of four. So I get plus one there. I have three units here. All three are different. That means I get an additional plus one there. So one, two, three, plus one. Plus one from the Scythe Reaver, that's five. Plus two more for the general. So I've got seven combat total. There's only five dice in the game. So you're going to have to roll a couple a second time. All right, here we go. So I have three critical hits and two regular hits. So first of all, I'm going to use those three critical hits to wound the dragon right away. So now Fulgen is down to three health left and three combat value. On top of that, I get to re-roll two of these dice because of my extra combat value. Remember, I had seven. So we're going to roll two more here. I'll leave those two because those two hits are going to happen later. And I got misses on those. And so now Fulgen is going to attack. Again, I'm going to leave those two there. He's going to roll three dice because now his health is reduced. And he's got one hit. So he's going to deal one damage. We'll take this sword unit out. I get to decide which unit that is. Now it's going to go to Fulgen. And then he's going to take those two wounds that I did earlier. So now Fulgen is down to one wound or one health left. Which means he only has combat power of one. I get to decide at this point at the end of this combat round. If I want to keep fighting or retreat. Now I have a lot more power than he does. I'm going to keep fighting. Now I do have to... Remember that my side Reavers here do not get the bonus anymore since now Fulgen's down to one power. Also, I only have one, two, three, four power total to fight against him. And so I'm going to roll a four dice here. 
and I've got one hit. That one hit is going to kill him, but he does get a counterattack counter of one die. And so his roll here is one hit. So here's what happens. He's going to take this one, place it in, the, in his slot there. Now he's got a full slot. That's going to gain him a power. And those get removed. But now he's going to take a final wound. And as you can see here, he's fully wounded which means he has no combat power. And so the next time he activates, if Fulgan is fully wounded, he, it can't activate glyphs. Instead, the next glyph would activate is canceled and he heals two wounds. And so now, if the dragon is injured and forced to retreat during combat, the opposing player chooses a power to steal from the power track and places on their own power track. Power does not flip when taken. It remains in whatever state it is. No more than one power can be stolen this way during combat. So I'm causing Fulgan to retreat right now because I fully wounded him. I steal his power and add it to my track. He's going to retreat. He retreats to an adjacent, uncontrolled, or controlled region as long as it's not one of my regions. So the when it comes to retreating, you're going to have to roll a dive for this. His possible retreats are to here, 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 and here. So we're going to label those as one, two, three four, five, and roll a die. It's one. And so Fulgan retreats to South Tiberia. And then the last part of my Arcane Assault involves drawing another Vala card, since I don't have enough power to use one right now. And the card I drew was Quickening. It's a two-cost card. Place this card in front of you. The next glyph you activate this round is activated twice. Then discard this card. It's very useful. And now it's Magnifex's turn. So Magnifex is going to use Horde and Vala. And so it's for Horde, if Magnifex is not in the focus region, move Magnifex one region toward the focus region and collect a power from that region. And so it's going to collect this power here, adding it to its board. Now Magnifex has two total power. Then it's going to activate his Vala action, spending that one power and moving Magnifex to the adjacent region controlling the most power. And so there are three regions here with one power each that it can move to. We'll label this as one, two, three, four, five, six, and roll the die. Six it is, so it's going to move to the Oriashi jungles. And that'll end Magnifex's turn. And now it's Alaria's turn, and it's got a deploy action. So place an Alarian unit in every uncontrolled region adjacent to an Alarian region. There are no uncontrolled regions right now. And then it says move the Alarian General to the Alarian region closest to the focus region. It's in the focus region. If no units were placed, place three units in the General's region. So it automatically gets three there. Now one thing to know that Generals can only have a total of six units in a region. That means five regular units in the General if the General is there. Or six regular units in a region. Once it hits that mount, any extra units it could gain are discarded. And now it's Fulgan's turn, and it would like to use Wrath, but since it's fully damaged, it's going to heal two wounds and cancel out that Wrath Glyph, and that'll end its turn. And then it's my turn, and I finally get to use my Harvest card, and it says collect power from each region equal to the number of Tiberian units in that region. Do not collect power in regions containing a dragon you are not bonded with. You may spend a power to gain a Denzian card from the lineup that matches the region you control. So I will gain this one here from the region I'm in. There are none in this region that I also control, so I can't gain any more. And there are no Denzian cards that I want to gain right now or can gain. I don't want to spend my power right now. I'm going to keep my power for now, and that's going to end my turn. And now it's Magnifex's turn. And now Magnifex is going to look for the focus region, which is the region with the most power that's closest. That's this region here. So it's got two power there. It's not close enough. So it's going to move one region towards it and initiate a combat. And so it's going to choose between South Tiberia and Trade Road. We'll call that odd and even and roll. Even it is, that means it's going to move to the trade row and initiate combat with my one unit there. Now Magnifex has full health, so it's going to roll four dice. Hopefully there's no critical hit. Now there's two critical hits. Now something to keep in mind. 
With cities here, you'll see that a defending army in the region ignores one wound suffered in combat. After this wound is ignored, remove the city from the region. If no hits were rolled during the combat or all the hits suffered were negated from another source, the city is not removed. So, it negates one of these critical hits, but the other critical hit goes on through and kills off my guy. We're going to add this to Magnifex's board. And now I've lost control of the, the trade road. Okay, now it's Alaria's turn and it's going to harvest. So first it's going to collect power from each region equal to the number of Valerian units in that region. But it doesn't collect power from a region that has a dragon it's not bonded to. So it's going to collect both of these powers here and in the five woods and add it to its board. And then it's going to use the Vala action on its card. And the way this works is it's spent, if able, spend two power... And then move the Alarian General directly to the Focus Region. Okay, so once again, the Focus Region is the region with the most power. There's only single power regions on the map, so it's going to go to the closest one. The closest one is the Nahu Woods, so it'll go there. And then it's going to place three units in that region and initiate combat. And so the Alarian General has five combat power, five dice. It gets plenty of critical hits. It's going to kill off that unit. And now it has control of that region. All right, Fulgen's turn. He's going to soar. If he's in the focus region, collect a power from that region. And he is, so he'll go ahead and take this power and add it to his board. And that'll end Fulgen's turn. And now we have the end of the action deck, which is another event. So it says, it's a year of turmoil. Place a neutral unit in each uncontrolled or neutral region. So we place one here. Now look. Trade Road has Magnifex in it, but Magnifex can't control a region, so it's technically uncontrolled. So we place a unit there, there, there. Again, Fulgen can't control that. There and there. So now neutral units have filled up the board quite a bit. And so after all action cards have been played, if the event is empty, the game would end. Now I get any region cards that I currently control the region for, so I lose the Trade Road card. And I'll gain the Upper Primalian range card. The, the action symbols, the glyphs, are the same. It just indicates it for that region. And then you discard any face-up Vala cards back into their owner's discard pile. I don't have any face-up Vala cards right now. Shuffle all the remaining unclaimed Denzing cards back into the Denzing deck and put a new six out. And then the next round begins. And so once again, we start the new action deck with an event card. And I'm going to choose Arcane Deploy. And for my second card, I will choose Deploy again. And my third card, I will choose Assault. And my final card, I will choose the Upper Primalian Range. I'm going to pass and place the events on the deck. And so we're ready to start here. And we have a Year of Wind. In each, player, in each turn order, each player may take a Deploy action. The player with the initiative token starts. All right. Well, that helps a lot, actually. And so I'll go ahead and deploy these two units in this region here. And the Magnifex is going to move two regions towards the focus region. It can be North Tiberia or Orashi Jungle since they're the closest. And I get to choose in this case that the focus region will be the Orashi Jungles. And the Alarian General is going to get to place more units in its region. Again, it can't have more than five regular units plus the General making a total of six units in one region. And then Fulgen is going to move. It's going to choose this region or this one. And I will have it move here. And that ends the events. And we're on to the actions. And I have my arcane deploy. So the first thing I'm going to do is deploy two units. We'll add these two here. And then I'm going to use my, my fear card here for the Vala action. So it's going to cost me two power. So I flip those two over. And I put this in my discard pile. I get to choose a region adjacent to my general and push the forces out of there. So I'm going to choose this region here and I'm going to move these away. And so it's going to go to one of these two regions since this one's full up. We'll call this odd and even. It's odd. So these will all move into Alaria there. And that ends my turn. And now Magnifex is going to use its Soar ability and says if it's in the Focus region, collect power, which does. And that ends Magnifex. And so Alaria has a Deploy. It's going to go ahead and deploy a unit here, taking control of that region once again. 
and it doesn't have the two power it needs to spend on the Vala action, so nothing else happens there. So Fulgen has Wrath. It's going to move one space towards the focus region. The focus region could be this one or this one, and it's going to initiate a combat. I think I'll have it move here. It'll initiate combat and trade road. Now Fulgen only has two health remaining, so it has a combat power of two currently. It's going to roll two dice against that one neutral unit. It has one wound to, to inflict on that unit, but that unit gets a counterattack. Unit counterattacks for one damage. So Fulgen will take that unit, adding it to his track. And now it's my turn, and I can deploy. And so I'm going to deploy my general. And one of each of my units, actually these four units, into this region. And that's going to cause a Dragon Bond roll again. And so this time we'll see what happens. So I roll one for me, which is a miss, and another miss. So no Dragon Bond happens here. That ends my turn. Now Magnifex is going to go towards the focus region and initiate combat. We'll choose this one as the focus region this time. We'll move into South Tiberia. Initiate combat against these two units. Magnifex has four attack power. It does ha do enough damage to kill those units, but it's going to be after a counterattack. And the counterattack does one damage back to Magnifex. These two units die. They would be added to Magnifex's track, but Magnifex already has a unit there. So that makes a total of three. Gaining Magnifex another power. Magnifex has four. And the current lead, everybody else has two. And now Alaria is going to deploy again. And so Alaria will take over South Tiberia, since it's uncontrolled currently. As you can see, Alaria is spreading across this map rather quickly. So if power comes in, especially in this mountainous region, Alaria is going to be able to harvest a ton of power. We'll see how it plays out for them. And so Fulgen's going to move here and then collect a power from this region. That puts Fulgen at three power. And now I get to assault, and I think I'm going to go ahead and assault North Tiberia. So once again, I have seven power. I'm going to be fighting against Fulgen first. And so I'll roll five dice. I've got one critical hit. I don't need to roll any more because that's the amount that Fulgen can take. So Fulgen's fully damaged. I get to steal one power from him. And then he's going to retreat. Now, he has to retreat to a region that's not controlled by me. The only region it, that he can is this one. Now, if I had been controlling Isval as well, Fulgen would actually be destroyed at this point. And that would actually end the game, which wouldn't have been good for me because I would have lost because I don't have the most power. But in this case, he does retreat there. But there's still units in the region, so I have to attack now the neutral units. So once again, I have seven. And, whoops, that was a miss. I do have one critical hit on that one. So we'll remove one there. I can roll two more dice because of my seven power. There's two more critical hits. So that neutral guy is gone. So my plans turned out fairly well. I've got three regions now. All right, so Magnifex is going to move towards the focus region, which is this one here. And then it's going to use its Vala power, heal a wound, spend a power, and then move to the adjacent region with the most power. So one wound healed, one power spent, and it's going to move over here now to this region. And so Alaria wants to attack. And so it says choose a non-Alarian region with the most power tokens in it that is adjacent to an Alarian region. And currently that's this region here that Magnifex just went to. So it says place a unit in that region, move all units but one into that region. So there's five there. And then initiate combat. All right, so the Alarian General also has seven power at this point with five units plus the two power from the General. It's going to attack Magnifex. Does two damage, two initial damage on the first roll. There's two more dice to roll. Two critical hits. So Magnifex is going to be totally wounded by the end of this, but does get to counterattack with two dice. And that's two hits. So these two units go to Magnifex's board, but Magnifex takes two more wounds. Alaria steals a power. Magnifex retreats to this location here. 
Now, Alaria still has to finish uh, combat here because now it's got to fight the neutral units. Now, Alaria only has five power. We've got one critical hit and one wound. So the one neutral unit is going to fight back with the one die here before it dies. Does nothing. And now Alaria has control of that region. All right, so the score as it stands. Magnifex 3, Alaria 3, Fulgen 2, and I have 3. This is a close game. And both, uh, both Fulgen and Magnifex are in bad positions right now because either of them could be eliminated from the board. Now, Fulgen wants to use Horde right now, but it can't. So it's got to heal up, removing two tokens from the board. Then it's going to use its Volibility, heal one wound, and if possible, spend two power. If that two power is spent, roll a combat die. Each standard or critical hit deal a wound to each other dragon in all regions adjacent to the mountain. So there's no dragons adjacent to the mountain. I have asked for clarification on this rule, whether it would actually spend the two power. I think because there is nothing to hit, that it wouldn't spend the two power. So I'm not going to spend that there. It still heals the wound though. All right, then my final card is the region card for upper primordial region. And so I can upgrade. There are no upper primordial region cards right now. But if I want to spend one power, I could gain this one here. So these are called the uh, puka bards or puka bards. <laughs> I'm not sure, but they do not add combat value. Instead, after placing a non puka bard unit in a region, place a puka bard in that region. So it's ability to get more units out on the field. I'm not sure if I want that. I have to spend one power. It's very tempting. I think I'm going to pass on that. However, I do get the reinforce. So if the region, the upper primordial region is controlled, which it is by me, I place a unit of my choice in that region and any adjacent regions that I control. So I get to place a unit in all three of these regions. So I'll place this one here, this one here, and this one here. That's going to definitely strengthen my area there. And then I get to place a city token in upper primordial range there. So now it's reinforced. Okay, so Magnifex is going to use the horde action, except it can't. It's fully damaged, so it needs to heal to health. And now Alaria, with all its plans, is going to do a harvest. So it collects power from each region equal to the number of Valerian units in that region. And of course, it's going to collect both of these powers that it had control over. That puts Alaria in the lead with five power. Then it's going to use the Vala action. It's going to spend two power, move the Alarian general directly into the focus region, place three units in that region, and initiate combat. There's only one focus region right now, and that's the wilderness. And so since it had two power to spend, it's going to do that move. Place these tokens there and initiate combat. That's five power or five combat power. We got three critical hits. Doesn't matter what happens at this point. Both those neutral units are dead. All right, so Fulgen's gonna go now and it's gonna soar and says if it's in the focus region, collect a power. If not, move two regions towards the focus region. So one, two. And now we have the final event of the round. Place two power tokens in the Arashi jungles. Place two power tokens in the Bucentauri Wilderness. Of course, the Alarian General is very happy about that. I am kind of happy about this one over here. I have a chance to move over that way. It's getting interesting, though. I'm going to go ahead and reset for the round. All right, so we're going to go ahead and add a card for the first event. I'm going to use Arcane Deploy as my first card. I'm going to use Assault as my second card. Harvest as my third card, Trade Road as my fourth, and then I'll pass, ending that there. All right, and so the first event here is to place two power tokens in Isfal and two power tokens in the lower Primalian range. And so I get to deploy first, and I will deploy here, moving those units down. And then I will draw a Vala card, and so I get Blood Tendrils. In each region adjacent to your general, do one wound to a non-friendly force or dragon. Now Magnifex is going to soar and it's going to move two spaces towards the focus region. The focus region is that one. So we'll go one, two. Now Larry is going to use assault and it's going to assault this region here. And so it's going to 
gain one unit into this region, move these two units in here and attack. So it has three power, three combat power. It's going to do the one hit it needs to, to conquer it, but the one neutral unit here is going to attack back, does nothing. All right, so Fulgen is going to move into this region and collect a power. Then before it does its Vala action, it's going to roll for Dragon Bond with Alaria. And so we'll roll both these dice at the same time because neither of them re-rolls. And both are hit. So that means Alaria and Fulgen are going to join forces at this point. So we will put their tokens on their boards. Now, we have to look at the Dragon Bonded effect of each of those factions. First, Alaria shows that once Dragon Bonded, immediately place two power on Alaria's power track up to a maximum of nine. So now it has seven power. Wow. And then Fulgen here, while Dragon Bonded, heals two wounds up to its maximum at the start of each cleanup phase. Lucky him. And so now Fulgen's going to use its Vala ability. It's going to heal one wound. Then it's going to spend two power. And it's going to roll a die, and, and it's going to try and wound the dragon here. It's a miss. Now it's my turn, and I get to use Arcane Assault. So I'm going to go ahead and move in here with these four units. Actually, I'll leave that one there. And so I have six power here, four for the units, one for the general, and then one for having one of each different type of unit. My side reavers do not get a bo bonus because there's only two enemy power here. But I do do uh, enough critical hits here to kill those off. And then I'll draw another card here. And I have Poisoned Earth. Remove all power from a region adjacent to my general. And now Magnifex is going to go. It's going to use the Horde ability. And now its focus region has changed to Isval, so it's going to move here and take a power. Now at this point, Alaria is going to do a harvest action. And so with that, it's going to harvest all the power it needs to win the game. <laughs> and there you have it. Alaria has taken 11 power. And so combined with Fulgen, the two factions have won and I have lost. And Magnifex has lost as well. I wonder how it would have gone if I had been able to bond with Fulgen earlier. I think bonding is very important, but I lost my chance there. And the game ends here. And so this has been a solo playthrough of Dragonmon Lords of Vala. You have to let me know what you think in the comments below. Ask me any questions you like. Do bear in mind that this is a review copy I received from Draco Studios, and I appreciate them for that. Please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. And I thank you very much for watching Tabletop for One. Have a great night.